right, hello Twitch. Tonight is Wednesday, which means inspirations, character building from a miniature. Now last week I talked about doing a monstrous um, build for the DMs. Um, I decided to put that on hold for one more week, uh, just because last time I, I don't think I did the character building enough justice. So I took a lot of time and um, didn't make it, I think, as good of a show as I wanted it to be. So we're going to push reset and try it again today. So rather than going through the Bones 5 products, I went through and just grabbed at random a miniature that was still in its blister card that I have in my pile of shame. And... It's still on the bracket to paint, which means I enjoyed the character uh, that I saw in the blister enough that I want to paint it um, soon. Just because I have so many, I have not yet started it, and it is a big, huge box full that uh, are in that box. So I just gave it a good shake and pulled one out. So what we pulled out, I know on the screen it's backwards, but this is Captain Blackscale Dragonfolk. Now, I remember this miniature specifically because it was for ReaperCon 2021. It was an exclusive figure that launched um, for the ReaperCon uh, convention. And you can see here it's in the Bones USA, which in my opinion is the best material that Bones um, have been produced in from Reaper. Uh, so you can see it's a dark gray material. Um, I've done a number of reviews on it on YouTube, um, as well as here on Twitch, older Twitch videos. So if you're curious about the Bones material and the Bones USA, um, I'm sure I've got some videos on some of my socials. So what I'm going to do is just pop this open. You can see I still have it super simple. I've got my player's handbook. I've got a blank character sheet. I did get my 4D6. I'm using ones with pips because I'm hoping they show up nice and easy on the screen. It looks like my one off color. Um, it, it may show up. It may not. We'll see how it does. It's got a luminous um, and sheen to it. So uh, when, you, when it's in the right light, it doesn't look too bad. And I know the lower screen is not going to show me when I'm sitting here rolling the character. So I may just minimize that and maximize the other. Maybe. Maybe we'll do it this way here. And give a good full screen so we can see. There. I hope that shows up pretty decent. Um, but anyhow, back to the miniature. So this one I thought was cool for two reasons. So ReaperCon was themed um, in the fantasy setting of Brinewind, so very pirate-esque, and I, I am a big fan of that because I bought a lot of product um, for High Sea Adventures, so it worked really well for me. Um, but this mini, let's talk about it here real quick, and you can see this is a Dragonborn. Actually, the sculpt on it I don't know how well that's going to show up. Um, not too bad. Uh, the sculpt on it is pretty dang cool. It's got some really cool details. Well, my light, for some reason, is going yellow. Hmm. I'll have to check that out. My other one is much more white, so we'll swing it a little bit so we get some more white on it. Um, but a really good sculpt to it. It is not flat faced. It does have some scaling in it, which is very pronounced. Um, snout looks good. And then pretty much pirate clothes down to the feet and the tail. Now there's one of the debates for Dungeons and Dragons. Do Dragonborn have tails or not? 
It's up to you. It's really up to you. If you want your dragonborn to have tails, put tails on them. If you don't, then say they don't. I mean, you can see the miniature has a little bit of flashing, but I love that it's got this kind of overcoat, and I will probably paint this as though it's leather. Now, it does have a heck of a mold line to it, um, which will require a lot of cleanup. I can see now that is just a heck of a mold line um, all throughout the one side. This side isn't quite as pronounced or bad. And it's still got quite a bit, but not as bad as this side. This side is really bad. So before I paint it, I will have to do a lot of cleanup on it. But for a Dragonborn, it's you don't see a whole lot of Dragonborn miniatures. So let's uh, jump into creating a character off of this bad boy. We know already that we're going to have a Dragonborn. Now, last week we did a tiefling. Um, and this week it's going to be a dragonborn. And let's jump in. So on in the player's handbook, we're just going right into character creation. So we chose the race. Let's get into the races. And... into Dragonborn. Let me adjust here a little bit just so we can utilize our character sheet. And I'm, I'm using a two-page character sheet because I didn't know initially if we would need that spell, that separate spell sheet or not. So I grabbed it just in case. So for the Dragonborn, we're going to start this Dragonborn at level one because we're doing this as though we're starting a fresh campaign. I'm going to pick the names right out of the book, and I know this is not going to show up on camera. I've just got limited space on my desk. But we're going to have this Dragonborn. This is going to be actually... I am going to... I'm going to throw this one for a loop. This is going to be Dar. D-A-A-R. I'll tell you why that's a big loop here in just a bit. All right. And then the childhood name is going to be uh, Climber. And the clan name is going to be Mayastan. All right. So here we go. We know because it's a dragonborn... Our strength is going to increase by one. Boy, let me see if I can get this camera flipped around. Just so you can see it correctly. There we go. That's much, much better. Okay. So we know strength is going to increase by one. Um, no, I'm sorry. That increases by two. So we're going to add two to our strength. And we're going to add one to charisma. Let's clear out a little bit just so I can scoot this back. I apologize. I'm, we're still working on all of our space and setup and, and all that good stuff. So this is a learning process and a learning progress. You're seeing us evolve and develop stream by stream. All right, there we go. So age, young dragonborn grow quickly. Um... And let's see, they reach adulthood by 15 and they live to around 80. So on the back, I'm just going to put this Dragonborn is 15. Um, I'm not going to worry about alignment right now. However, uh, they tend to extremes. And uh, so good and evil, they go to extremes. They avoid neutral. Most Dragonborn are good, but those who side with Tiamat can be Terrible villains. Um, so size, you're still medium. Even though you are a big creature, your size is still medium. Um, let's see. We have uh, standing well over six feet tall. 
well over. So we're going to say six foot eight inches and weight. Uh, they are heavier than humans. Um, they average 250. So we're just going to pop that down because this miniature doesn't seem like super, super bulky and massive. So we're going to say a lot of that weight is in the scales and bones to hold them to hold them up. Um, and then speed is going to be 30 feet. All right. And then we need to pick the ancestry. So this one, because it's pirate themed or coastal themed, I am going to choose bronze because bronze are generally coastal dragons. Um, so the bronze will give us lightning as a feature. Lightning breath. And I'm going to write that's a 30 foot, 5 wide. Deck save. So a breath weapon of 30 feet. All right. Uh, um, so the DC for that is going to be 8 plus the Constitution modifier, which we don't have. So I'm just real lightly going to write 8 plus Con Mod, just to remind myself, um, plus Proficiency. Now we know the proficiency is only going to be one because we're a level one. Um, so we know that already we're going to have nine plus the con modifier. Um, and then that is going to be 2d6 um, on a failed save. Um, also, they will have resistance to lightning and then languages we can speak read write common draconic and there is the racial bits for our character dar now we move into classes, and this is where I spent a lot of time last week working on the cleric. So Dragonborn, let's take some note on this character. I want to call out three things. So obviously they're on a ship, they're not going to be wearing plate armor and everything, but it's a good indicative piece of the character itself. So this is someone who is not going to wear armor, though they are carrying a sword. Um, they do have a big belt, they've got... Uh, belt and a sash, uh, big deep pockets. In some ways that's making me feel a little roguish. Um, and let's just check and see. A scoundrel who uses stealth and trickery to overcome obstacles and enemies. So that's a possibility. Um, I'm kind of digging. This is maybe that rogue. The sword, I mean, we could still go fighter, but I'm, so I've got a couple of thoughts. Already when I was picking the name and everything, I was thinking, so Dar is actually for a dragonborn, a female's name. So I was thinking, what if instead of a male dragonborn, what if this was a female who is disguising themselves as a male to climb some type of a professional ladder. So trickery, I kind of like that. So we're going to choose uh, rogue. And I always do this bad. I know my handwriting is horrible. I appreciate you sticking with me. And of course, if anybody's watching, if you have questions, comments, anything like that, pop them into the chat. Um, we at Green Oaks love the interactions. As a reminder, make sure you follow. When we hit 50 followers, we're going to be giving away a D&D &D starter set. Um, maybe we'll do that when we hit 25 if we see a good increase over the next week. 
Uh, but right now we've got it set at 50. If you want a D&D uh, &D starter set, make sure you give us a follow. All right, so we've got the rogue. We know that their hit dice are going to be a D8. And we know their proficiencies based on the... Um, the class that we're choosing. We're going to put uh, proficiencies down in here. We have got light armor. We have got simple weapons. We've got hand crossbows. We've got rapiers, and we've got short swords. Now, one would argue that this is a scimitar, but because of the length, I'm going to call it a short sword. Uh, so now we've got the primary ability is dexterity. That's the primary and they will have saving throw proficiencies in dexterity and intelligence. So we want to mark those with blacking in those circles on the saving throws. Now let's dive into the class a little bit for the rogue. And again, this is all just out of the player's handbook. I suppose we could grab the Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide as well and build out of there uh, because they've got a lot of good um, bits and pieces. We may actually do that. I may. Let's get to Rogue real quick and then um, I'll grab the, the Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide just because it is that coastal piece. So let me grab that real fast. We've gotten to Rogue. We have uh, got that book right over here. Bear with me. All right, Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide. So also, because it focuses on Sword Coast, it's got a lot of information. Um, Dragonborn actually aren't featured very heavily in this. There is a page right up kind of on the history and things like that um, for Dragonborn, but it's, it's nothing really more than that. It doesn't have additional information for the race build. Um, really just some more like background for the race itself. But in here we do have a heck of a section just about rogues. So this is another place we can use to pull some uh, information for our archetypes uh, that are kind of cool and it adds on to what's built in the player's handbook. Um, so let's see what we have. We have uh, <laughs> swashbuckler of course makes sense um, and then mastermind I'm gonna keep it opened to this swashbuckler as the as a uh, possible archetype but we'll see we will see I want to look first and start getting the basics out of the uh, players handbook so we know oh see I already messed up the proficiency bonus at level one is a plus two so that would mean our we would have 10 plus our constitution modifier. Um, we know that a sneak attack is a 1d6. So we're going to write that down. If the rogue gets to use their sneak attack, it's a 1d6. And features are expertise, sneak attack, and thieves can't. expertise 
sneak attack. Thieves can't. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so for our hit points at first level, eight plus con modifier. I'm going to write that really light. Now here's where we have to start generating. Now last time we used just a standard array so that the character is good enough to use for any type of um, AL tournament play and uh, we can pop them right onto uh, roll 20 and use them for Adventures League. And generally that standard array is accepted by all GMs. So even if you're sitting down at the table and you have a standard array, because it's a standard array, it's pretty widely accepted. But today I wanna roll. I feel like rolling. And what we're gonna do is roll 4d6 and drop the lowest. So there is a 12. And so generally, there are lots of ways to do this. There are lots of ways. I'm gonna assign them. Some GMs let you assign them at will, but I'm gonna go just for broke and see what we get. Uh-oh, this one's horrible. Now, some GMs let you re-roll ones. Some don't. We're going to go with what we get. This is going to be horrible. So there is 10 on a dexterity. For a rogue, that's pretty horrible. And constitution, 13. And... Wisdom is next. Wow, look at that. 15. I didn't warm up my dice. That's what it is. Oh, no. Now they're just letting me know. They're in charge, not me. And an 11 for charisma. So, so far, that's what we've rolled. Now, I've already chosen the rogue class. Um, you can tell dexterity as the primary ability. We're going to suffer. We are going to suffer as a rogue. Maybe that's going to add some good RP, though. I mean, this is a female Dragonborn um, disguised as a male, kind of doing that trickery thing, that scoundrelly thing. Let's just keep building and see what we got. Um, let's see, we've already gotten the proficiencies uh, for tools. We also have a proficiency with thieves' tools. And we get to choose some skills. So we've got acrobatics, athletics, deception, insight, intimidation, investigation, perception, performance, persuasion, sleight of hand, and stealth. Um, I am going to kind of go for broke. I am going to go for acrobatics. See, because my dexterity is weak, I want to look at what's Dexterous, so I can help myself in the play. Um, let's see here. We also have sleight of hand as a thief. That's dex based. Um, I'm not actually going to go with sneaky. How about that? I am not going with sneaky. But I am going to go with uh, persuasion because maybe fast talking could help me. And I am also going to go to Insight because they have to be able to read the room and read people and, and really have that empathy if they're going to pull a fast one on somebody. So already a completely different character than I anticipated. Um, all right, let's get to some equipment. So I'm going to start with a short sword. Um, I am going to start with a short bow with a quiver 20 arrows I'm going to choose the burglar's pack and I'm writing that lower so I can write down the contents later um, I am going to go with <coughs> uh, leather armor two daggers and thieves tools 
Now up here, because my attacks go up here, I'm going to write my short sword, a dagger, and a short bow. And then I know the dagger is a 1d4, a 1d6, and a 1d6. We'll add our um, modifiers here in just a moment. Uh, I suppose we can go through and create those now. So our strength, we know we have a plus two from being a dragonborn. So that's going to make that 14. So our modifier is going to be a plus two. Dexterity is just a 10. So we've got a plus zero. Now some people write the modifiers on top with the numbers below. It doesn't really matter how you do it. It's whatever is most convenient for you. Sometimes at quick glance, it's easier to see your modifier larger than the number. Um, it's really up to you. So constitution is a 13, so we've got a plus 1. Intelligence, we've got a plus 2. Wisdom, we've got a plus 2. And charisma, plus 1, moves that up to 12, giving us also a plus 1. Now, <coughs> Our passive wisdom is 8 plus our wisdom modifier. We have a plus 2. That gives us a 10. All right. It doesn't look like any comments in chat. We're going to keep moving. Keep moving. Um, so at first level, choose two of your skill proficiencies or one of your skill proficiencies and proficiency with these tools. So we've already got those. Um, your proficiency bonus is doubled for any ability check that you make that uses either of the chosen proficiencies. So that's the expertise. So what do I want to be an expert in? What do I want to be an expert in? It's anything I've already chosen as a proficiency. So I am going to choose, I am going to be an expert in sleight of hand. And um, <laughs> and persuasion. So the way this works is with those two skills, my proficiency bonus is doubled. So for instance, my persuasion, where normally you use your charisma, which would be a plus one, I get to double that to plus two. And then for my sleight of hand, because that is dexterity, normally I would get a plus zero. Oh boy, see, this is a, this is a dilemma here. Double your proficiency bonus. Now I've got a zero there. And double zero is zero. Double zero is zero. Hmm. Well, that kind of is horrible. I'd have to talk to my DM on that and say, can I make it a plus one? But that'll be up to my DM. Uh, okay, and then sneak attack. Um, so basically with that, I get the 1d6 um, sneak attack. And that's if I have uh, advantage on the roll. Only if I have advantage. And that has to use a finesse or ranged weapon. Um, all right. And then thieves can't, of course, that's just speaking in jargon and dialects and codes. So nothing really fancy or that I need to know there. Um, all right. Now we go into roguish art types. So there is a thief, someone with fast hands, an assassin, an arcane trickster. So initially that was kind of what I was thinking of, was an arcane trickster. Um, but and now that I've got the Sword Coast guide here, I'm going to pull that in. And the pirate piece really works. So I am going to choose a swashbuckler. So I'm going to write that... Um, I'm going to write that down here just so I don't lose it. It's at the very bottom of my features and traits. 
swashbuckler. Uh, basically, you focus your training on the art of the blade, relying on speed, elegance, and charm in equal parts. While some warriors are brutes clad in heavy armor, your method of fighting looks almost like a performance. Duelists and pirates typically belong to this archetype. A uh, swashbuckler excels in single combat and can fight with two weapons while safely darting away from an opponent. So fancy footwork kicks in on third level. And really until third level, that's when it's really going to start um, making a difference on that archetype that I choose. But ultimately it's going to go into a master duelist. And uh, I think it's going to play off really nice. So that will be the archetype of this rogue. Now this is one of the pieces where I would really want to talk to my DM and say, I know we rolled this way. Oh, for some reason I did not write my charisma in there. I know we rolled this way, but is there any possibility I can do something with dexterity? Because I really want to focus on being a swashbuckler. I'm okay to give up some points. Um, out of something else and hopefully my GM would say I'll allow you to move a point or two um, but you have to move them out of something else that you're proficient proficient in and so I would say I would move because I also have a bonus to my charisma I'm going to knock that down to 11 Ooh, no if I only get to move two points Mm -hmm. See, wisdom, I'm thinking, would be a better dumper here. It would, it would, it would. Because I know I'm not going to get an ability score increase for a number of levels. So, nope, I'm going to keep it as is. My GM was gracious enough to allow me that opportunity, but um, I'm going to play it as is for right now. And then when I am able to increase, I'm going to increase in dexterity, which will also help my expertise. Uh, which is going to be a benefit to me in the long run because I'm hoping this character plays for a long time. That should always be our goal. Um, let's see, we've already got all of the languages we need. Now we're going to start looking at background. And for the background, um, I'm trying to think of a good one for this rogue. I think I've got an idea. But I don't want to be an acolyte. But I'm thinking about a charlatan. Um, had a way with people, know what makes them tick. You can tease out their heart's desires. So I'm thinking of somebody who is uh, disguising, who is kind of a climber looking to increase their um, station, their holdings, their titles. Um, someone who is trying to pass off on this uh, rugged sword coast as a male dragonborn who's actually a female. I am thinking it could be kind of cool for Dar to have a charlatan background, um, which kind of goes against the grain of Dragonborn because generally uh, they really focus on honor and um, are generally good aligned. And I wouldn't say that Dar is not good aligned. I would just say that they are possibly very greedy or... Uh, um, maybe they just suffer quite a bit from low self-esteem and they're trying to, to uh, increase their own self-esteem. So that's what I'm going to choose. Works great with swashbuckling as a charlatan. Um, <clears throat> so let's check and see. What do we have for skill proficiencies? We're going to add in deception. We're going to add in sleight of hand, which we already have. Um, so there we would get um, basically an additional bonus uh, tool proficiencies. We are also going to be proficient with disguise kits and forgery kits. And equipment, we get some more equipment here. We're going to get a fine set of clothes, a disguise kit, um, so then we get tools of a con. Um, 
we're going to go with a signet ring of imaginary duke and a pouch and 15 gold pieces. So our gold pieces, we'll put 15 right in the equipment, 15 gold pieces. All right, uh, every charlatan has an angle that he or she uses in reference to other schemes. Choose a favorite scam or roll on the table below. So these are the scams. I cheat at games of chance. I shave coins or forge documents. I insinuate myself into people's lives to prey on their weakness and secure their fortunes. I put on new identities like clothes. I run sleight of hand cons on street corners. I convince people that worthless junk is worth their hard-earned money. So the two that are kind of getting me the most is I put on new identities like clothes and I insinuate myself into people's lives to prey on their weakness and secure their fortunes. Hmm. <laughs> I am going to say for scheme, I put on new identities like clothes. All right. And the false identity, so the secondary identity that includes documentation, acquaintances, and disguises and everything, for that one there, we are going to put the name of, so going, I'm just going to go back to the Dragonborn and pick out a male's name. And that is what our Dragonborn will have for their disguise. Let's get to Dragonborn section and a male name would be uh, Rogar. Rogar. Rogar Climber is their Maybe they won't use that child name of Climber. They go by Rogar Mayastan, but they're really Dar Climber. Um, all right, and then uh, let's go through and look at the personality ideals, bonds, and flaws. So generally you can roll for these on a table. Um, in this case, I'm actually going to pick them and let's check and see what we got. So for a personality trait, um, flattery is my preferred trick for getting what I want. Hmm. Let's see. Yeah, I like that one. I like that one. I can see them climbing by using flattery. And that would be fun to play at a table. Think about with the other player characters around there and every time somebody does something, you just pile on that flattery. So flattery is my preferred trick for getting what I want. Now the ideal. Um, We've got a few listed out here. I know they're not easy to see on the screen, but uh, independence, fairness, charity, creativity, friendship, or aspiration. Ooh, that just sells itself so far based on what we've done. Aspiration. I'm de determined to make something of myself. Now a bond. A bond. This is where you start getting good information for your DM to use 
to bring your character further into the gaming world. In my opinion, bonds. So here's kind of how I break this down. I know we're getting off topic, but we're saying we're sitting good on time so far. So personality trait, this is how you role play with the other characters at the table. Um, ideal is the goal you give your DM to have you work towards achieving in game, right? So this is between you and the other players and the DM and their NPCs. That's how you role play the character. This is the goal that the DM attempts to help you get your bond. This is the challenge, the personal challenge and character story arc that the DM allows you and the other characters to explore and overcome. And then flaw, this is the follow-up piece to your personality trait. It's both a way that you RP um, to specifically more so for the NPCs, um, but this is between you and the GM um, how they can make sure that they have NPCs and interactions in role playing that you can have uh, really show at the table. So first and second are great for RP experience. The middle two are great for story experience. So super important, never miss these and make sure you give these to your GM. Every time you create a character, Get these to your GM. They will thank you. Um, all right, so bond. Uh, let's see. Um, bum, 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 bum. I swindled and ruined a person who didn't deserve it. I seek to atone. No, they're not atoning. A powerful person killed someone I love. Someday soon I'll have my revenge. You know, so this one here really sticks to me. A powerful person killed someone I love. Someday soon, I'll have my revenge. Maybe that's why Dar initially started um, hiding and is climbing. It isn't only just so they can get wealth. Maybe they did come from a noble house and were betrayed, left for dead, and are now hiding, trying to reclaim their station and get back what they had so they can get revenge. That is a great story hook. Uh, let's do that one. A powerful person. Killed someone I love. Someday soon. I'll have my revenge. Great, great story hook for your GM to integrate a uh, minor villain and have you and your party confront in one way, shape, or form and look for resolution for that kind of story arc that you create just by having a bond. All right, and then flaw. So let's see... I'm convinced that no one could ever fool me the way I fool others. I like that one. Um, but I also like I hate to admit it and will hate myself for it, but I'll run and preserve my own hide if the going gets tough. So that one is a challenge because that could bring some challenges at the table if I duck out of combats and run and hide. And I could always use my persuasion to say you know this that or the other thing and get out of it but I don't want this person uh, this character to be the asshole of the group I really don't want to play the asshole of the group I think there are too many edgelords out there already so I'm going to actually choose the uh, the fooling one um, because there again that's a great way for the GM to have a hook for NPCs maybe maybe he'll exploit that uh, let's see. I'm convinced that no one could ever fool me the way I fool others. 
All right, I think that's a great background. I really do. I like that background. Um, realistically, we are pretty set on our character, uh, Dar, who goes by uh, Rogar, Rogar Mayastan. Um, now, this is, of course, the back of the sheet. Here's some things that you get to do. So eyes, we know this is a bronze dragon. So we are going to put bronzed blue. So think of a, uh, like a viridian blue with flecks of bronze in it. Um, skin is going to be bronze scale. And then hair, not applicable. We got scales. We've got scales. Now I do like the thought of the signet ring with the fake duke. So at some point I'm going to draw out that signet ring and um, that will be a cool piece for my GM to integrate into the story in some way, shape, or form. I'm just going to do a quick little doodle now and say it has this uh, dragon, this flying dragon facade on it um, with lightning bolts. Uh, so this is flying dragon with lightning bolts. And no enameled or anything. This is a signet ring for pushing into wax. Um, allies and organizations. I really didn't pick out things that had good allies and organizations, though at some point I imagine a thieves guild will try to get this rogue. Um, additional features and traits. Treasure, I don't have any. Now character backstory. Here's where we get to flesh out some of the details that we put in based on this. And... Um, I think we've already got a really good character, but let's just put that uh, Dar orphans as a child went into hiding Oop. as Rhaegar since the um, let's see, would it be a different clan? Yeah, let's say it's going to be a different clan. Let's go back to Dragonborns real quick. And uh, I just want to pick out a different clan name. Um, let's say this is going to be the, I want one of these that sounds kind of rough and antagonistic. Norixius clan attempted to kill and scatter the Mayastan clan as Rhaegar Climber um, Dar is looking to increase wealth, power, and skills to confront, and let's pick out, who was it that destroyed the family? Maybe we make this one really funky and have it be another female dragonborn. Um, no, let's go ahead and say it was a male dragonborn, Medrash, or no, Kriv. I like Kriv. Kriv. Norixius. And take revenge. Um, let's say... Traveling the Sword Coast as a, see they're not super great at the sleight of hand, 
oh, there we go, as a diplomat for Duke, um, what's another good dragonborn? Uh, Balasar. Climber. An imaginary. Dignitary. Dar is hoping upcoming adventures help her gain what she is after. And now that's enough backstory that when we give that to our GM, they're going to have so much to play with there. So much to play with. Um, now we can go through and just finalize and flesh out some of the details. So our hit points, we know it's 8 plus our constitution modifier, which is plus 1. So we're going to start at 9 hit points. Um, we know our hit dice is 1d8. We can erase that off there. We don't have any saves. Um, let's see here. Let's go to our equipment real quick and make sure that we get all of our equipment fleshed out. Anything that we need in there. Um, let's see here. And let's see, alignment, we're going to do, now I know they go on the spectrum, but neutral good feels really good. Neutral good. Uh, equipment, let's get to equipment. Now we're into spells. Oh, I missed. I've already passed the equipment. Flipping around. Flipping around. There we go. All right. So for our dagger is 1d4 plus piercing. This is a finesse. Um, our attack bonus is based off of our dexterity. So we have a zero there um, for those. Uh, our short sword is also a 1d6 piercing, also a finesse, we're good there. And our short bow is a 1d6 piercing, good there. And now we can go through and add our saving throw bonuses. So dexterity, we've got a plus zero, even though we're proficient in it. Um, intelligence, we've got a plus two. And um, basically that doubles to a plus four. Strength, we have a plus two. Dexterity, plus zero. Constitution, a plus one. Uh, wisdom is a plus two. And charisma is a plus one. And zero experience, my name is Joe. This is Green Oaks Gaming. We are just about at the very end, but I think we have created a pretty cool character all off of a miniature. A miniature that, had I seen it on the shelf and thought, well, that's a pretty cool miniature. I'm going to buy it. I'm going to paint it. Um, I would be happy to play this character in a game. It gave it a lot more depth and background. So when I do go to paint it, I actually have a lot of ideas now on how I would do it. One, the color that I would paint it is going to be good. Um, 
I would make the coat be like leather. That would kind of account for the leather armor. Uh, I may have just a little bit of hidden color in on the shirt because, of course, in the disguise they have fancy clothes. Why not make it look like velvet, like a blue velvet, a deep blue velvet pants and a silk, a yellow silk shirt, something fancy. And yeah, overall, I think it's pretty cool. Dar, our female rogue who has a background as a swashbuckler and is hoping to improve on that one-to-one -one combat. This is almost my Inigo Montoya instead of looking for the six-fingered man. That's kind of how I would play this at the table. Of course, taking into account the personality traits and flaws. So um, going around and flattering everybody. Boy, that is kind of Inigo Montoya, isn't it? Inigo Montoya, the dragonborn. I'm going to have to think about that a little bit more. That's cool. That's a cool character um, comparative when it wasn't even a thought from the beginning. All off of a cool miniature that I happened to get and great way to build a character. You don't always have to come up with a character concept and then go and spend time and large amounts of money making a custom miniature. It might be extremely fun to find a cool looking miniature. Something that really is different, unique, and speaks to you in some way, shape, or form. And build a character off that miniature. That's what we're going to do every week on Wednesdays. Might be monsters, might be characters. Who knows? The point is it's all about inspirations building off of miniatures. So that's our show tonight. I hope you enjoyed. If you catch this on the VODs, make sure you give us a follow. Um, again, when we hit 50 followers, we're going to be giving away a starter set. We may move that up to 25. We may not. It's hard to say. But be sure to give us a follow. And of course, if you don't mind, be sure to check out our other videos. We do all kinds, whether it's reviewing products, whether it's talking about RPGs, whether it's talking about painting miniatures, Lots of content, so be sure to check it out. Enjoy, and have a fantastic week. Let us know where will your adventures take you. Bye-bye.